Hey gang, Diana here today with a look inside the tunnel book that I recently did as a design team project for Joggles. You can see how uh, I did just so this all pretty sloppily. No, it probably could have done that neater, but I don't. And here is an example of the painting style and technique I'm going to show you today. I have a bunch of uh, brushes there in the water. Don't do what I do. This is a fan brush. Uh, you can see that once it gets wet, the, the fan all splits up and uh, the, the bristles split up. I have mixed some colors here. I've mixed a lot of green, different kinds of green colors. I'm using Goldens. I'm going to link some of the Dilutions paints below. Uh, I really like them. I recently got a couple and I like them a lot. Uh, so I'll link those below for you, but you can use whatever you have on hand. I'm just using any acrylic paint, craft paint, anything. So both these sides I'm just showing you have been gessoed, uh, lightly sanded just to take off the um, goopier bits. I use a foam brush to gesso. It leaves it sort of uh, less textured, if you will. Now I'm just wetting my brush and you saw me squeeze the extra water out of that ferrule area where the bristles meet the uh, metal. And I'm also mixing in some glazing medium from Golden. I think Liquitex has it. You could just use water. I do like the glazing medium. It, it opens, the, the dry time is is longer and it also just loosens the paint up in a way that I like, but you, you really don't need to use it. You don't have to paint the whole page because we're going to be painting sky and um, grass, grassy areas, and uh, I'll be painting a path on some of the papers. Uh, don't, be, don't forget the uh, uh, edges of the book and you'll want to do that inside of that circle as well when you get to those pages that have circles or squares cut out of them. I'm dipping into that white again because I do like to have the bottom of the sky area lighter than the top. That's um, it's a little trick you can use to make this make it look like it's more distant. It's going off into the distance. Uh, and here comes the fan brush. I wet it, cleaned out that ferrule of of the um, between the brush and that metal bit. That's where water can get trapped. So you want to make sure that's clean. And now I'm just playing around with it. Here I've got the lid of the Dilutions Fresh Lime. And I'm, you can see I'm just mixing the colors right there, wet in wet. I like the idea of mixing colors on a canvas or on a page because it gives streaks of color which is just makes things seem a little more uh, realistic and soft and well in this case bristly and you can see I'm sort of patting almost like you would be using a stencil brush patting in there to capture some uh, texture and now putting the brush down and sort of just pulling or flicking up to get that raggedy grass-like edge. A fan brush is fun to use. There's lots of different uh, techniques that you can use with it using the brush. So you could play around with this. It's a fun brush to use uh, on any kind of a textury. And again, important to me. Uh, uh, I like to lightly mix 
my paint. And in this case, I think I have fresh lime. I'll list the colors I used below. And it's a dark, a light green, a dark green, a blue green, a yellow green. You don't need that many. And I even have a gold up there. I think that's Azo, nickel Azo gold. And that's a color I love and use. It's great mixer color. I highly recommend if you like painting to have this color in your palette. It seems to go with everything. And the muddy greens, uh, you might not like them on the palette, but they, they do add a lot to for depth and just to keep your eye interested. It's not so flat. So that's fun. And I did really have a good time with that brush. I've used them only a couple times in the past, so I kind of retaught myself and played with it. It would be a fun brush to just play with. I have a couple different sizes. This is the number four, the smaller brush, and it just depends on how big a canvas you're working on or what kind of, of an object you're painting. Is it a tree? Is it big? Is it, you know, the size of your brush should match both your subject and the size of your canvas. So I'm, again, just painting around the edges of that so it's sort of seamless. And here I am with the one of the pages with the circle cut out. This is probably the first page because the circle is really large. And by the way, don't leave your brushes <laughs> sitting in water. Uh, it's really bad for your brushes, even if they're inexpensive ones. I'm back on the, the back of the back cover. <laughs> And I'm just painting in some clouds. I've got a small flat brush and it's really pretty easy to do. Just kind of draw the brush across and then push it up for the little bumps, bump ups in the clouds. I'm not even stroking. I'm just pushing the brush around and you can see that's pretty easy to do. Usually clouds have flat bottoms and uh, I used um, a brighter, more pure white for the more f the clouds that are closer to us. And right now I'm painting clouds that are further away. Again, giving you that perspective that it feels like things are further away. It's a little, uh, just a little tip. Adding a tiny bit of blue. Keep putting too much in there. So this. I hope you enjoyed this little peek inside of my tunnel book. I had a super great time doing this project and shot a lot of video along the way. So I will be sharing more uh, from this project. And here's a couple of close-ups. I hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up. Check out my blog and the links below. I'll see you guys soon.